This is another head-to-head -head comparison, and this time we're taking a look at the 2022 Carnival and going to be comparing that with the Kia Telluride. Going to be going through everything that you need to know about these vehicles. Horsepower, torque specs, first, second, third row spacing, cargo dimensions, and everything in between. If you're looking for one specifically on either the Carnival or the Telluride or other Kia vehicles, check down in the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video on those ones as well. But let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun, and see what the differences are between these two vehicles. Looking at some exterior styling of the vehicle, I love the look of this thing. Really, really sharp. Styling-wise, overall, I can appreciate what Kia's done from a design perspective. But looking at some of the basics, the rubber itself on the vehicle, we're looking at either 18 or 20-inch tires, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're looking at. And we do have a series of different options for the rim. Because we're in the SX Limited, we've got this beautiful aluminum rim. When we get into some of the blackout packages, it's going to change the complete dynamic look of the vehicle as well. Now, as we start to move forward, we've got our LED headlamps and our fog lamps those are going to be standard on the entire vehicle lineup and looking along the very front i love the telluride badge in the front of the vehicle there and then with kia's new logo just along the front in this beautiful black honeycomb grill i think looks really really sharp in this thing the styling of this thing is fairly unique. It's like Kia decided that they wanted to make a van without actually making a van. So it's a kind of an interesting design choice, but it does work for what they're accomplishing with this vehicle. Looking at the actual tires themselves, we've got two different options depending on the trim level of the vehicle that we're in. It's either going to be a 17 inch tire or a 19 inch tire, like what we're looking at here. Because we're in the EX Premium version of the vehicle, so the EX Plus, we do have Continental Rubber on this one with this unique rim. And that's going to be dependent, again, on which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at. But as we start to move forward, one of the nice things about the Carnival is that we do have LED headlamps, and that's going to be standard across the entire vehicle lineup, and we do have our fog lamps down below as well. Now, depending on which trim level of the vehicle you're looking at, like this specific one does have that forward-facing camera as well, which means that we've got a full 360 view. Now, that 360 camera goes in tandem with the front camera, we've got some cameras underneath the side view mirrors, and then we've got our backup camera as well, which stitched together gives us that full view. Taking a peek underneath the hood of the vehicle, and this thing looks really, really clean. Now, it's because obviously it's a newer vehicle, but it's just organized nicely. Now, Kia did opt for the actual engine cover there, which just hides some of the mechanical components people don't necessarily like the look of. But looking at it, this thing does only have one available engine choice, whether you're in Canada or the US. And that's the 3.8 liter V6 that we're looking at here. From a power perspective, this thing is going to be able to push out 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. So plenty of power when it comes down to it. And this thing is actually paired with an 8-speed automatic transmission. But I do love the overall look and the aesthetics of this thing under the hood, and Kia has given easy access to a number of things. So we can easily top up some fluids if we need to. We can easily check our oil, and then we've also got easy access to the battery, which is kind of nice. All right, now taking a peek underneath the hood of the Carnival. So this thing is powered by a 3.5 liter V6 engine. So a naturally aspirated to non-turbocharged engine. And there is only one available engine choice for the Kia Carnival. From a power perspective, this thing is going to be able to push out 290 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. You know, moving to the back of the vehicle. So we've got our rear wiper, which is always a nice touch. We've got our Kia and Telluride badges there, as well as our LED tail lamps. Now it might be LED, might be halogen, just depending on which trim level of the vehicle that you're looking at. From a towing perspective, this specific one does not have the hitch receiver. If you did have that, you'd be able to tow up to 5,000 pounds in this vehicle. We do have a dual tip exhaust just along the right hand side there as well. All right, so cargo dimensions for the vehicle are going to be showing up. So as you can see there, we have plenty of width, depth, and height to the cargo area. Now that's just it. It's the cargo area by itself. So it's literally just this area that we're measuring right now. So we don't have a ton of space just here. But one of the nice things is that we can also lift this thing up and it's a completely removable tray. And we have a little bit more storage space right underneath as well. Now, folding the third row down is also a very straightforward process, and it's a manual process. So literally all we're gonna do, we're just gonna take these, we're gonna crank it, and that's gonna lower the headrest automatically. And we can just push this down, and it is a flat fold, which is great. Same thing along the other side, we're just gonna crank that, fold down as well, and we are set to go. But look at the difference in the depth when we have that third row folded down. So a lot more space, which is a nice thing. Now, folding down that second row, we've got a couple different options because we've got a button just along the back here, and that's going to let us power fold either the left or the right side down independently of one another. If we had the bench seat instead, same thing, it would just be a release for those other ones as well. But if we hop into the side, so if you're not in the trunk area, you need to load some things up, we can just along the side there, pull this little latch, and that's going to literally fold the seat down there as well. 
but look at the difference in the cargo dimensions when we've got that second row folded down. So a lot more depth. And like I said, I do love the fact that we've got a split seat there so we can fold down one side or the other if we wanted to. And it's a very straightforward process in order to be able to do that. All right, now, as we start to get inside of the back of the vehicle. So, as I mentioned, this tray, we can easily remove this. Gives us a little bit more space as well. Now, the, the spare tire for this thing is actually located just underneath the vehicle. So, we need to unlock a part of it first in order to be able to take that tire off. Very straightforward there. Looking along the left-hand side, we've got two different buttons. And that's going to be for the second row. So, we can release that second row there electronically. And then we've also got a 12-volt power point. So, we can plug some things in in the back if we need to. As we jump into the back of the vehicle, so we've got our Kia logo along the very top, Carnival badge along the bottom left-hand side. Now, a few things that are going to be standard regardless of the trim level that you look at. We do have our rear wiper that's kind of hidden right underneath the top lip there. We've got our backup camera, which is also going to be standard, as well as a reverse sensing system, so that park sensing system. Now, we do have the flexibility of being able to turn that beeping off if it drives you nuts, but it is nice to know that we've got some great technology standard inside of this vehicle. Now, this specific one doesn't have the tow package, or doesn't have a hitch, I should say, but we do have that option. And when we get the hitch, whether we install that aftermarket through the dealership, whatever the case may be, this vehicle is going to be able to tow up to 3,500 pounds. All right, now, cargo dimensions for the vehicle are going to be showing up. And one of the nice things about the Kia Carnival is that we do have stowable seats. So these third row, we can actually fully stow them down if we wanted to. But we do have a ton of space in the back here. So we need to throw things like strollers, buggies, whatever the case may be. We've got quite a little bit of space in the back here before we have these seats folded down. So something to think about. But in order to actually be able to stow these things, it's also very straightforward. So firstly, what we're going to want to make sure we do is lower the headrest on both of the seats. And we've got a little pull lever there. So we're literally just going to pull. And that literally is going to fold the seat down gentle push and it's locked into place so we can do that both sides so driver passenger fold seat down but we've got a flat fold there as well but look at the difference in the cargo dimensions when we've got that third row folded down in the stowable seat so a lot of flexibility and we've got quite a little bit of space when it comes down to it now one other thing to note i've got a few different dimensions that are showing up now as well so very first one is going to be now from the stowable seat so very bottom of the seat there to the very top loading area there's going to be another one where we're just inside and we're going down from the very bottom there up to the very top because we've got a couple extra inches of space when we fold it down that way as well one other thing this middle seat you can literally take this whole thing out as well so if you get the eight passenger configuration we've got a little tab along the bottom there we can crank that in order to be able to lift the seat up and we can easily pull the seat out as well now these other seats are going to be locked into place so the outboard seats but the middle seat we can absolutely remove it if we wanted to all right, so look at the difference in the cargo dimensions when we've got that second row folded down. So as you can see there, because we've got that stowable seat, it does kind of play with what we can actually store in this thing when it's folded down. But it is nice to know that we've got some storage space. We've got quite a little bit of depth as well when it comes down to it. Now, we can literally just pull these things back up again as well if we need to create a little bit of a flatter back. So let's look at the cargo dimensions there when we do that. But I mean, at the end of the day, because this third row is stowable, I mean, it's going to depend on how much space you need. Do you need something that's fully flat or not? That's going to kind of dictate how you fold down this second and the third row. All right, now looking at some cargo area features. So we do have a little bit of storage space along the left side. So we've got quite a little bit of space in the back there, which is always a nice thing. We do have the option for a cargo tie down as well. So we've got some cargo netting, things like that, that we can easily install in the back here. But I am still blown away at how much space is actually in this third row. So in the cargo area there, I'm just going to pop my shoes off and hop on in. But literally, like... This is ridiculous. Like there is so much space back here would definitely a benefit because if you're storing strollers and things like that and you need all that space, you've got a ton of cargo space in the back of this thing. Now, when it comes down to it, looking along the top, we do have a cabin control light along there and we've got a few power points along the side. So we've got a traditional 12 volt port as well as a 100 watt power point. So our traditional wall outlet, so we can plug in quite a few things into the back of this thing. We're now looking at some standard technology in the vehicle. So we're always going to have our backup camera. That's going to be there regardless. We also do have a reverse sensing system. Also something that's going to be standard. Blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Also a standard feature. Now, taking a peek at the front of the vehicle. So a few things that may be standard, may not be depending on your trim level, are going to be the forward sensing system with this front facing camera, which is going to give us a full 360 view. That's available in some of the higher trim levels, but it is nice to know that we've got that safety as an option. 
Right now, filling up fuel inside of the Telluride is also a very straightforward process. So just along our driver's side, we've got a little cutout there, and it is a cap system, so just unscrew, fill up, and you're good to go. Now, when it comes to the fuel quality inside of this thing, minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just regular 87 gas, so your regular fuel. Do you need to use a premium? Absolutely not. Right now, looking at some standard technology inside the vehicle, so just very, right along the very top there, we can just kind of make it out, but we do have our hidden wiper along the top, we do have a backup camera that's also going to be standard. So is our reverse sensing system. So that's the one that's going to beep at us as we start to back up. Outside of that other technology, we've got our blind spot system. So that blind spot system is going to let us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And because of the trim level of the vehicle that we're in, we also do have our cameras there. So along the side, and there also is a front facing camera. And what that means is that we've got a full 360 view as well as we go. So if we want to kind of see what's going on beside us, behind us, etc., we've got that option. We do have our front sensing system there as well. So we can just kind of make out those forward sensors. That is not going to be standard in the lower trim levels, but it is in some of the higher packages. Right now, filling up fuel inside of the Carnival is also a very straightforward process, just along our driver's side door. So you can see we've got a lockable system there. Click, lock it back into place. Now, when it comes down to fuel quality, regular 87 octane, so 87 gas is all you need to use inside of this thing. Now, looking at third row spacing inside of the vehicle. So I've got the second row set up for somebody six feet tall. I'm six feet tall. And with me sitting fully upright, my head actually touches the top. So the top of the very lip here, so it does touch. So something to think about there. But one of the interesting things is that we actually technically can move the seat forward a tiny little bit if we want to. So here's a little lever just along the left and the right hand side. We can crank that up with me sitting fully upright like that. Same thing, I'm just touching technically up overhead. If I kind of move forward a tiny little bit, I've got about an inch roughly of head space. So, and it's nice to know that, I mean, if you've got a family that are a little bit shorter, they'll definitely be able to fit back here, no problem. Feature-wise, inside of the third row, not too much back here. We do have a little vent control along the back, which is nice. We can open and close it as necessary along both the driver and the passenger side. So we do have a few USB ports and we have a few cup holders in both of them as well, which I think is always a nice touch. All right, now hopping into the second row. So great, great style when it comes down to it. I love what Kia's done with this, but there is so much back here at the same time. But let's start off just looking at basic spacing, like six feet tall, driver's seat set up for somebody six feet tall. I have a great amount of knee space, good amount of foot space. And up overhead, I've got about three, a little over three inches. So I'd say like three and a half inches of head space up overhead, which is nice. But one cool thing is that that same one that we, the same lever along the side that we use in order to fold the seat forward, if we crank that up, we can actually fold this seat backwards a little bit more as well. So we can recline it a bit. With it reclined, like literally probably six inches of headspace. So taller people will absolutely be able to get inside of this thing. And the seat itself is actually super comfortable. Headrest is really, really nice, fully adjustable there as well. Almost as if we're riding with a pillow behind our heads. So that is a really cool thing. But a couple things to point out as well. So if we actually take a look along the driver passenger side, we do have some pockets along the back so we can store some things easily if we want to. We've got a few cup holders there. There are a few cup holders along the doors as well, which is always a nice touch. Now, as we start to move down, we've got a 12 volt power point as well as a traditional 150 watt outlet. So a traditional wall outlet. So we can plug some things in there if we want to. But one of the cool things is that this wall outlet also is rotating. So what that means is essentially just a safety thing. So if you've got kids, they won't just be able to jam things into there. You've got to actually, it's got to rotate in order for you to be able to plug things in. So that's a nice safety touch that Kia's decided to do. You, a few USB ports along the side there, which again, I love the fact that Kia's done this. It's such a simple thing and it looks really, really nice at the same time. Now, as we start to move up overhead, we've got some pretty cool climate control settings there as well. But basics, we can turn on our lights or our dome lighting along the top. We can also figure out not only what's going on with the temperature, we can control our fan, we can figure out if it's going to our face or to our feet, and we've also got an auto setting in the back there as well. So a lot of flexibility when it comes down to it, but I love the fact that we've got such great controls and it looks really nice at the same time. But one really, really nice thing that I love about the Telluride is the heated seats, but this thing also has the option for a ventilated seat. So one of the, I love that fact, like we're sitting here right now, I'm like, it's like 32 degrees Celsius outside. So it's a little bit toasty, but with those ventilated seats on, it makes a huge, huge difference. So it is nice to know now that ventilated second row seat available in some trim levels of the vehicle, not available across the entire lineup, but it is nice to know it is available there as an option. That is a cool thing. But one other thing to think about is that 
that this specific one is the seven seat configuration, which means that we do not have that middle seat there. If you had that middle seat, you would essentially only be able to have heated ventilated seats for the outboard seats. That middle seat is never going to be heated. So definitely something to think about. And then one other nice thing is that we also do have a shade along the top there, so we can easily pull this thing up and over in order to block a little bit more sun. And that's gonna be the same for both second row windows as well, which is a very, very nice touch. Up overhead, we do have our little handle and there also is a hook on the top as well. Looking at third row spacing. So I've got one of the captain's chairs set up for somebody who's six feet tall. And I also have this middle chair pushed up a little bit. And that's one of the nice things is that because inside of the bench seat configuration, all three seats can move forwards or backwards independently of one another, which is definitely a good thing. But inside of this seat with that second row seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall, I've still got a good amount of knee space. I've got a great amount of foot space. And up overhead, I've got about an inch and a half roughly of head space when I'm fully upright. So definitely something to think about. If people are a little bit taller, you might have to get them sitting in that second row instead though. So something to think about there. But one of the cool things is that we also can recline this seat. And that's one nice thing because we can recline the third row. We can also recline that second row. So when I'm reclined back and I'm super comfortable, by the way, inside of this thing, up overhead, I've got a little bit closer to about three inches of headspace before my head would potentially hit up overhead there. So definitely something to think about, but it is nice that we've got the flexibility to be able to recline that second and the third row. So it is kind of nice back here as well. We do have a few things. We've got a power point along our side, USB on both sides, and then we also do have a few smaller cup holders and a few, a little bit of storage space there as well. We can also control what's going on with our fans so we can literally close off those vents. And then we've got our cabin control lighting up there as well. Now, one other thing that's fairly unique to the Carnival is in this third row, we've got this adorable little cover. <laughs> like It is so neat. Well, we can kind of block out a little bit of sun and that's going to be for the same for that second and for the third row back here. Right now, looking at second row spacing inside of the Carnival. So I'm six feet tall. I've got the driver's seat set up for somebody who's six feet tall, and I still have a great amount of knee room and a good amount of foot space as well. Up overhead, I've got about four inches of head space, so plenty of space when it comes down to it. Now, the Carnival is available either as a seven or an eight seat configuration. And this one we are looking at is the eight seat configuration because we've got this bench seat. So when we get the seven passenger, this seat's going to be gone and it's just going to be an easier pass through in order to get to that third row. But it's not impossible to get in the back here. And one of the cool things is that if you've got a series of taller people, like I said, I still have quite a little bit of knee space. So each seat, when you get into the bench row, can literally be moved forward forwards and backwards as well. So we can create quite a little bit more space for the people that are in the back row as well, which is definitely a nice touch. And then one of the cool things about the bench seat is that these three seats can also be folded down individually. So we've literally got a little tab. We would just crank that up in order to be able to fold this thing down. So very straightforward. In the back now, we do have a few more cup holders there. We've got some cup holders in the front also. And then literally just going to crank this tab up again, pull it in order to be able to fold this thing back up. So very straightforward. Now, looking at some other technology back here. So, first and foremost, we do have a button in order to be able to open and close the side door. So, power open, close. We can kind of stop partway through and we can get it open and closing as well. We do have a little shade, so we can easily install that one if we want to. I say easily as I'm struggling. <laughs> okay. So we can easily install this thing if we want to. We've got our door handle button there. We've got our lock. And then we've also got our window up and down. And along the second row doors, we do have a little bottle holder there as well. So we can store some things. Behind the driver passenger seat, we also do have a few small pockets. These things are fairly tight, so you're not going to get too much back there. But it is nice to know that it is there as an option. We've got a few USB ports in the back there as well, so tons of power because if we look in the back of the armrest, we've got a few more power points as well. Now these ones, we've got a traditional wall outlet, so we've got 150 watt, no, sorry, this is a 100 watt power point, and then we've also got a 12 volt power point there as well. So our traditional cigarette lighter adapters, we can throw those in there. Down a little bit more, we also do have a little storage area, so if we need to store some things, we could also easily do it here. So very straightforward there. Now, a few other things, because there, like I said, tons of things in the back of this, but moving up overhead, we do have a button along the top, and that's one of the neat things, because second row passengers now have the option of being able to change radio stations and things like that, simply by pressing that button. But we do have the flexibility to be able to lock that thing out if we wanted to. There also is a little camera back here. So that's one of the interesting things because you can figure out what's going on with folks in the back literally by pressing a button inside of that actual cluster. So inside of the digital screen, and that lets us know what's going on back here. So definitely useful if you wanna see if the kids are kind of going crazy or what's going on in the back row. So it is nice that we've got that option. 
Looking along the passenger side, so up overhead here, we do have a series of climate control settings. So we've got our basics for our fan control. We can turn it off. We can have it go to our face or our feet, mixture of both. We've got an auto setting and we can even control the temperature back here. So we are tri-zone climate control, which is definitely a nice thing. Along both passenger and driver's side, we do have a handle, and then we also have a little hook as well. And then we've also got our basic vent control, as well as a few, car a few cabin lights overhead. All right now, taking a peek at along our driver's side door. So along the actual handle itself, we do have a little button there, and we can use that button in order to be able to unlock or lock the vehicle. So as you can see there, we do have our power folding mirrors when we unlock and lock as well, which always is a nice touch hopping inside the vehicle. So lots of things to point out, but firstly, let's talk about how great the interior here looks. So great look along the door, along the top there, as you can see, we do have some seat memory buttons. We've got two individual profiles there. Looking at the actual buttons along the driver's side door, we've got our basic for our window control. We can actually power fold that side view mirror. We've got our basic for our window control, and then we can also kill off power to those back windows. Along the driver passenger side, we do also have a few pockets along the side there if we need to store a few things, bottles, things like that. And just to the left hand side of the steering wheel, we've got a series of different buttons here. Each one's going to do something different. So we can either increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen. We can turn our blind spot collision system and our notification system on or off. We've got our lane keeping system, traction control, and then we can either open or close the lift gate from the inside as well. All right, now hopping into the driver's seat. So same thing, this thing is, first of all, super comfortable, headrest there, <laughs> it's so nice. It's literally like I'm laying back on a pillow, so super comfortable there, and it is fully adjustable height-wise, which is always a nice touch. We don't have the option of reclining this thing, so it literally is locked into place. We can just go up and down with it. So it would have been nice to see this thing kind of recline backwards, forwards as well, but it is nice that it is at least extremely comfortable on our head. So I'll give you a point there, Kia. Now, this video is just going to be a short one looking at some of the basics of the steering wheel as well as that media screen. If you're looking for a fuller walk around, check down into the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video there as well. But looking at some of the basics, so we do have very, first of all, very, very beautiful look. We've got our new Kia logo along the top there, which I think looks sharp. Along the top left hand side, we've got our voice command prompt. We can change between a series of different modes. So things like AM, FM, Sirius XM, answer, hang up on a phone call. We've got our volume rocker and our volume control along the left pad. Pad on the right side is going to let us change between screens inside of the instrument cluster. We've got our adaptive cruise control system as well. So that smart cruise system, which essentially is going to be a set it and forget it cruise. So let's say you set it at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway, car in front of you slows down, yours is automatically gonna brake. If they pick up speed or get out of the way, yours will pick back up to that set speed again. So it is a great safety feature there. Along the left stick, that's gonna be the one to figure out what's going on with our running lamps. Right stick is going to let us figure out what's going on with our windshield wiper for the front and for the rear. All right now, as we start to move over, so beautiful multimedia screen when it comes down to it, we do have factory navigation, and on top of that, we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay support, which means that we can use Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze directly through this middle screen. But if you're looking for more of a walk around on this screen, check down in the description below for that fuller video instead. But a lot of features when it comes down to it. One of the cool things is that, yeah, we do have rear control for people in the back. They can control their climate settings, but if they're fighting about it, we do have the option of locking it out, and we can also control it from the front here as well. So we do have that option which is always a nice touch. Moving down, we are push button start inside of this vehicle. That's going to be the same across the entire vehicle lineup. We've got our basic for our volume rocker, which let's do a quick little audio test. Don't let the days go by such an incredible sound and that's the beauty of this Harman Kardon sound system. Speakers literally all over the vehicle and it sounds absolutely incredible. Moving down a tiny little bit, we've got some basics for some hot buttons. So we can hot button press to get to our map. We've got our navigation setting menu. We've got a hot button press for our radio, media screen, four-way blinkers, and a number of other things. We also do have a tuning rocker, so we can manually tune that way if we wanted to, because we can just press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, and that's going to let us do things like navigate. We can change radio stations, make phone calls, and things like that using our voice, which is a great touch. Moving down a little bit more, we've got the basics for our climate control. We've got some more advanced settings by pressing that button as well. We can figure out what's going on, windshield, face, feet, all that fun stuff. We do have a heated steering wheel inside of this thing as well, moving down a tiny little bit. So off to the side, both the driver and the passenger side, we have heated and ventilated front seats. So heated seats is going to be there at a minimum. We do have the option for ventilated seats, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that we're in. Moving down a little bit, we do have a little storage space there with a 12 volt power point and then a few USB ports. So we've got one in order to actually hook USB devices up and then another one strictly for power. Nice little area there as well, nice little storage space, which is always a good thing. We've got a phone size storage space. 
Moving down a bit more, we've got a few cup holders, and then we've got our basic gear shifter, which is always a nice touch, but it feels great in the hand. Which one of the cool things, we can flip this over to the side, and we can also manually flip gears out that way as well. So if you want slightly better control, we do have that flexibility inside of this vehicle. Now, as we start to move down a little bit more, we've got a series of different drive modes, and this is literally just a selector switch. We can jump between different modes there, and we can go left versus right. So we've got some basics for our drive, basics for the terrain. So we've got our comfort, eco, sport, and smart mode. We can switch it over to different terrain modes. So we've got our snow, mud, and sand mode. So definitely useful if you're going to be taking this thing off-road, and each mode is going to do something different. Down a little bit more, a lot of other buttons there. So we do have one for our auto start stop. So the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if we're stopped for an extended period of time, we can turn that one on or off. One thing to note, if we have it on and we turn the engine off, we do have to press it again in order to turn that system back off again. We've got a reverse sensing system. We can turn that one on or off so that beeping that we get as we back up, we can disable that one if we want to. We've got our parking brake, so electronic parking brake. We've got our auto hold setting, which I've always loved the auto hold setting because what that does is with the setting engaged, if you come to a complete stop and take your foot off the brake, the car is going to hold in place. So definitely useful if you're on distance trips, stop and go traffic, things like that, and you literally just want to be able to stretch your legs out as you go. We also do have your My View. So that view itself is going to give you that option of looking at that full 360 view also, which is always a nice thing. Now, as we start to move down a little bit, we've got our armrest with a little storage area, and we've got another USB port there. Now, we've also got a removable tray. Now, one other cool thing about the Telluride is that we do have the blind spot monitor as well. So we press that left turn stick, right turn stick, whatever the case may be, and it's going to show us what's going on beside us. So yeah, we've got that blind spot system, but we've also got the blind spot monitor as well. As we start to move up overhead, we do have our auto dimming rear view mirror. And we've got a series of different buttons. So we've got our home link. So if we've got a garage door opener at home, we can program in our garage door opener there. And a few on-off buttons. Up overhead a little bit more, we do have a sunglasses holder. And then we do have our control for the sunroof. So the first part of the roof is going to be a manual open. So we literally just open and close this thing manually ourselves, but we can fully open this thing up as well, which is nice. Here it goes. And let there be light. So nice. And one of the cool things is that we can actually open the, the front one and the rear one separately. So there are different controls there. So we can literally pop that shade open if we want to. And the shade's opening up there. And it just opens things up really, really nicely for that second row. One thing to note, though, it is literally just this front part of the actual sunroof that's going to open. That middle part is just a shade. But it is nice to know that we can give people in the back a little bit of light or just a better view up overhead as well if we wanted to do that. Up overhead a tiny little bit more. Let's close this out a little bit. Up overhead a little bit more. We do have our basics for our cabin control lighting. We've got our tow call, and then we've also got our SOS mode as well. Now this interior is actually kind of neat. It's like a, a micro suede almost, but feels really, really nice. Moving this visor down, we do have a little light there. We do have our vanity mirror as well in order to turn that light on. Little business card holder. And then we can take this thing out and we can extend it a little bit if we need to block some sun out as well. Now, looking along the driver's side door, so we do have a button there. We can literally press this button in order to be able to either lock or unlock the doors. So simple button press there. And when we go to unlock and lock, it's either going to powerful the side view mirrors or not. So it is nice to know that we've got that technology there. Popping inside of the driver's seat. So really, really nice look when it comes down to it. But looking at some of the basics there along the driver's side door. So we can power fold our side view mirrors if we wanted to. We can adjust what's going on with our mirrors. We've got our window up and down. And then we can also kill off power to that second row as well. Looking along the side, so driver passenger side, we do also have a little bit of storage space along both doors. Just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we can either increase or decrease the brightness of the cluster screen. We can turn our lane keeping system on or off, and then we've got our traction control button. Down a little bit more, we do have the option of either opening and closing those second, the second row doors, so we can hold these in order to power open or close. We can open and close the trunk, and then we've also got our basic button for the power door, so we can turn that one on or off if we want to. Big one there is just so that people in that second row can't press the button in order to be able to open the door up. All right, now, I gotta say, the initial look of this thing absolutely beautiful because we take a look and we've got a fully digital dash stretches across we've got a beautiful media screen there as well now one thing to note the media screen inside of the base so the lx trim level of the vehicle is going to look different than it will in the ex and the higher premium uh, the higher trims as well but it does have a very very great look when it comes down to it and it's fully digital across the entire dash like this thing looks really really cool but there's a lot of features when it comes down to it. And one thing, this is just going to be a basic look and a walk around of not only the steering wheel as well as 
the instrument cluster in that media screen. So I'm going to be going over some basics, but if you're looking for a fuller walk around, check down in the description below because I have put together a comprehensive video on how these elements work. But let's look at some of the basics. So first and foremost, the actual seats themselves. So driver passenger seat in the front row are going to be a power adjust. Now in the driver's seat, slightly different than what you're going to find in the passenger seat, but I'll show you that in just a second. So driver's seat, we've got a series of different toggles along our left hand side. First one is going to bring the seat forwards, backwards. We can go up and down with it. The next one is going to be for our backrest, so backwards and forwards. And then we've got one for our lumbar support, so a little bit of extra stability in our lower back. Now, one of the interesting things with the seat all the way down and back, 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 back. There we go. Okay. So tons of room. And like when it's stretched out like that, like I've got like a crazy amount of headspace. Like I've got like six, almost seven inches of headspace up overhead, which is kind of a nice thing. Now that's one thing, because I'm six feet tall. So when I've got the driver's seat set up for somebody six feet tall, nice and comfortable up overhead same thing like i've got almost six inches of headspace like that is kind of ridiculous so definitely nice to know taller people are absolutely going to be able to fit inside of this thing adjusting the steering wheel across the entire vehicle lineup is going to be a manual process so just by your left knee we've got a little lever there we're just going to crank that down and it's telescopic so in out up and down perfect position click it in order to lock it back into place now, looking at some of the other technology inside of this thing is kind of neat. When we get to the actual doors for the second row, they might be power, might be manual, depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you're in. We've also got the flexibility of turning on our lane keeping system. So lane keeping system, we've got two different versions of it. The base one, essentially think of it like bowling lanes. So you turn that one on, once you hit a certain speed, if you start to veer over without signaling, the vehicle literally is going to gen gently kind of nudge you back into your lane. So literally those old school like bowling lanes that you saw when you know just to make sure that you didn't get a gutter ball it's essentially that idea so you're kind of bouncing forward you know back and forward between lanes but there is one thing to note the vehicle does need to recognize the lanes in order for that system to work but having said that we do have a lane keeping system as well so that follow system which is an infinitely more like an infinitely better system so that system itself is kind of neat because what that'll do is it'll literally keep you centered and balanced in your lane as you go so it's following the vehicle that's in front of you using some of the cameras that are mounted in the front of the vehicle so very smart system and that's all tied together as part of the adaptive cruise control system as well so the adaptive cruise control looking in the pad on the right hand side is essentially your set it and forget it cruise we've got a few different buttons so the one on the bottom left hand side is going to be for that actual centering system we've got a distance indicator so how close or how far are we away from the vehicle that's in front of us and then we can turn the system on or off well, our buttons on the right hand side there are going to let us adjust what's going on at the actual cluster screen and it's kind of neat because we can kind of adjust some things we've got our speedometer tachometer showing as well so we've got a little bit of flexibility there Looking at the pad on the left-hand side, we've got a little bit more advanced options there as well. So we can answer or hang up on a phone call. We've got a volume rocker. We can seek, we can change between presets, things like that. And we've also got a voice command prompt. Now that command prompt is pretty cool because it gives us the option of making phone calls, navigating. We can even change the radio station using our voice, which is great. Now, if we have a phone connected through Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, we could also use either our Google Assistant or our Siri Assistant by pressing that button as well. Looking at the sticks, so left turning stick is going to exactly be for that. And it also gives us the option of adjusting what's going on with our running lamps. And then the one off to the right hand side is going to let us adjust what's going on with our front as well as our rear wiper. So very straightforward there. And we're going to pull in towards us to get that front windshield wiper fluid going. We're going to push away in order to get the one for the back. So really, really nice. But I, like I said, I am blown away by how nice this cluster screen looks. Like I said, fully digital stretch across the entire length of the vehicle. Kia, like you guys did an incredible job on this digital display. I absolutely love it. Now, one thing to note, this thing is going to be push button start and it's push button start across the entire vehicle lineup. Doesn't matter which trim level of the vehicle that you get, but it is nice to know that we've got that option. So taking a look, the actual media screen has a ton of options and a ton of flexibility as well. Now, this is a 12.3 inch screen and it is going to be standard, as I was mentioning earlier, in some of the higher trim levels of the vehicle. The base LX models will not have this larger screen, but you still do have an eight inch media screen, which does still support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's one of the cool things because this thing does have factory navigation, but if you wanted to use Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze, we can do it directly through this middle screen. We've got some voice memos and we've even got some interesting ones like an optional passenger view. So we can literally see what's going on behind us, which I think that is such a crazy feature. Like growing up, I have, like I come from a family with nine kids. So we had a, my family was a Ford family growing up. They had a Ford Expedition, Ford Windstar, and we needed the space. But 
in order to kind of see what was going on behind us, my parents literally had to turn their head back and scream at us. But now you can literally see exactly what's going on behind you because of a camera that's placed just right at the top here. So that I think is a brilliant design feature on Kia's part. So again, great job on that one. And it is very, very unique. We've got some sounds of nature and a few other things inside of the screen as well. And as I said, if you're looking for a more in-depth walk around, check down below because I've put together a video specifically on this media screen and how it all works. Down a little bit more, we've got a volume rocker. We've got our tuning rocker, which the tuning rocker, honestly, because we can tune using our voice, unless it's gonna be the passenger tuning, just use your voice instead. So it's kind of neat that we've got that option. And then we've got a series of different button presses in order to jump between each screen. And this is kind of cool because it's a, it's like a tactile, it's not a tactile button. It's literally like a little push button. And like, it's kind of neat what Kia's decided to do with this thing. I think it looks absolutely stunning. As we start to move down, we've got our front and rear window defroster, and we've got dual zone climate control inside of the front, and then we've got a tri-zone, so the people in the back also have the flexibility of being able to control what's going on with the cabin control temperature. So I think that's kind of a neat one. Now, we do have the option, like I said, to change the radio stations and things like that from here. In the back, they've also got that option, but we can disable that back switch if we wanted to, so that we're not kind of fighting between everybody. And that's the same way with the climate control settings there. So in the front, we do have the option of locking out that back climate as well, and we can adjust it as we want to, just in case the people in the back are fighting a tiny little bit. Moving down, we've got our basics for our climate control. Again, touch screen, and it looks really sharp as well. Moving down, we've got a few USB power points. Well, I should say more than a few. We've got three of them in the front here. We've got a few of them strictly for power and then another one for USB if we're hooking up for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Down a little bit more, there is a wireless charging pad. So if your phone supports wireless charging, you are set to go. Now down a tiny little bit more, we've got our shifter knob, park reverse neutral drive, and then we've got our manual mode again, just by switching it over as we're in the drive mode. And what that's going to do, it gives us the option of jumping in between gears as we go. Down a little bit more, we've got a series of different drive modes. So we've got our Eco, Sport, Smart, and then back to a normal mode again. And each mode is going to do something different. As we start to move down, we've got our electronic parking brake as well. So parking brake, very straightforward. We're literally just going to pull up in order to turn the parking brake on. We're going to hit the brake, the pedal, and then we're going to push that down in order to turn the parking brake off. We've also got an auto hold setting, which in and of itself is a neat one because if I switch into drive with the auto hold setting on, I can literally take my foot off the brake and it's going to hold the car into place. So it is a very smart setting there. So useful if you're in a lot of stop and go traffic, you can literally turn that setting on, stretch your leg out and Bob's your uncle. Wait, Bob is my uncle. Ah, now as we start to move down a little bit more, we do have our heated seats there and we've also got a heated steering wheel. We've got our park sense system, so that reverse sensing system, the beeping that we get as we back up, we can turn that one on or off as well. And then there also is a button for our 360 camera, which also gives us a few different views, which is kind of neat. And it is split screen, so we're going to get that 360 view no matter what, and then we can figure out which type of view we want. So if we're getting out of tighter spaces, we can kind of move between different options there. Now, we do have a few different cup holders and there is a phone holder as well, which I love the fact that Kia has included this because other brands do have some different options to hold the phone upright. So I love the fact that it is here inside of this vehicle as well. So definitely a nice touch. We've got a little storage tray in the back as well. And as we start to move back a little bit more, so we do have an armrest there and there's nothing inside of here. So no power points or anything like that, but we do have quite a little bit of storage space. There are a few cup holders back there as well, so just in the back of the armrest. Now, I mentioned the passenger seat is fairly unique for the way that it's adjusted, and the reason why is because there are a series of buttons literally just on the side, so on the left-hand side of the passenger seat, so we can move that seat forwards or backwards, and then we can also use another one to move the actual backrest forwards and backwards as well, so it is kind of neat on Kia's part that they've decided to go that route. Now, as we start to move up overhead, we do have our home link up overhead there, and that is going to give us the flexibility to be able to program in a garage door opener if we've got one at home, and we do have our auto dimming rear view mirror as well. Up overhead a bit more, we do have our basics for our cabin control lighting. We've got our tow mode, our SOS. We can figure out what's going on, whether or not the cabin lights come on when the doors are open or not. Now on top of that, we've got our visor. It does have a vanity mirror as well as a light along the very top. We can, well, we've got a business card holder there as well, but we can also extend this out a tiny little bit if we need to block some more sun. So it is kind of nice what Kia's decided to do with this thing. Well, that was a look at the 22 Carnival versus the Telluride. What did you think? I kind of like the Carnival, some of the features and things like that. It's interesting that Kia's decided to make this a van, but not a van all at the same time. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks. If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. And until I see you next time, take care.